the Fio K11 R2R Desktop DAC. It's a DAC. It fits on your desktop. I'm going to tell you why you want it, should want it, might want it, might not want it. But first, let's unbox it. The first thing I'll say is that, shock, horror, I'll be talking about subjectivity in this video. Yes, I know, it's different to what I do normally, but hey, change is life, and life is change. For me, I like objectivity, specs and charts, and I doubt if I still have the hearing to make any useful subjective comments. Unless, of course, I hear issues, such as noise, distortion, frequency response problems, or anything that otherwise sticks out like the proverbial 1.6 kilometres. But I also admire technical excellence, and what I could call the artistry of audio design. Artistry for its own sake. Really, I do admire that. What I'm getting at is that this is a DAC. The specs are excellent and beyond the range of human hearing. But it's a special DAC, not the common or garden variety that you'll find in typical consumer equipment. And it's this specialness, if that's a word, that will persuade you to buy, or maybe not to buy. In this video, I'm going to focus on what interests me most. So this isn't the whole story, but there's the manufacturer's webpage for functions and stuff, and how you get it to light up in different colours. I think there are more important things to consider, and I'm going to do that. The key is that the FIO K11 R2R is a resistor ladder DAC, sometimes called R-2R or just R2R, as in the FIO K11 R2R. Any other DAC that you find in any other audio equipment is mostly likely, almost certainly, going to be the Delta Sigma type. There are other types of DAC, but I'll leave them maybe for a future video. So what goes on in a Delta Sigma DAC? Why should we like it? Why should we not like it? OK, there's a lot of science here. A massive, massive amount. I don't have a PhD in it. Probably you don't either. And all simplifications and generalizations are bound to be wrong in some way. But the essence, as I see it, is that we send it a digital signal that has loads of bits, such as 16 or 24, and a sampling rate that's 44.1, 48, 96 kilohertz or so. This is converted to a very high sampling rate, talking multiple megahertz, but a bit depth that is much less, maybe as low as just one bit. One bit, a zero or a one, that's all you get. But the very much higher sampling rate makes up for that. Technically, and technically minded people will write you a paper on what happens next, but technically, this is easier to convert to analog with high linearity, low distortion using a filter to remove high-frequency quantization noise. That's about as simply as I can put it. Commenters who can add more simplification are welcome. Simplification, that's the key word, please. In a nutshell, the Delta Sigma DAC is practical and cheap to implement. As I often find myself doing in my videos, this <laughs> is a DAC. 
It costs me 9 GBP and plays audio from my iPhone to my wired headphones. Nine pounds! But where's the artistry, you may ask? Well, it really is all in there. But when something's cheap and cheerful, we tend to disrespect it, often unfairly. Now, what people will say about the Delta Sigma DAC are all kinds of things. I've looked up a few examples so that you don't have to. So, apparently, the Delta Sigma DAC is cold and sterile. It's lifeless, lacking in heart. It's precise, but precision comes at the cost of warmth. The music you would have liked to enjoy will feel mechanical and detached. I'm not saying this, by the way. I'm paraphrasing what others have said, and you may judge these comments as you will. More. The oversampling in Delta Sigma, it messes with the sound. It adds an unnatural layer, distancing itself from the original recording. OK, that's enough. I think you get the picture. But there are positives, too. Apparently, a Delta Sigma DAC can reveal tiny details and create a wide, defined sense of space. OK, I can't fault that. All these comments, of course, apply, even though the frequency response is flatter than a ruler and distortion and noise are 100 dB or more down. I so wish I had golden ears. But the resistor ladder DAC R2R, as in the FIOK 11 R2R, well, it's a different thing entirely. As concisely as I can manage, an R2R DAC uses a resistor network in a ladder pattern. Each bit controls a switch that either connects a voltage to the output or skips it. The resistors divide the voltage in a binary weighted fashion, and the final output is the sum of these weighted contributions. OK, talk about skipping the details. But again, commenters may add more simplification if they wish. Before I again paraphrase some real-world comments, I'll just say what I said before, that I admire technical artistry. If digital-to-analog conversion can be done by other means than for cheap, well, I see no reason why not. Here goes with some comments about R2R. I can't listen to piano on anything but an R2R. <laughs> R2R has effortless flow and dynamics. R2R feels more analog with a vinyl-like quality. R2R has a flow and warmth that makes me want to keep listening. R2R feels more analog. Delta Sigma is too crisp for me. <laughs> All of this is interesting, confusing. Perhaps these people just imagine what they're hearing. But there's a real issue here. R2R needs precision resistors, really, really precise. So where an electronics hobbyist might use resistors with 1% precision, you'd need something more like 0.1, 0 0.01% to get good results in an R2R DAC, and possibly additional error correction to get distortion figures as low, or approaching as low, as a Delta Sigma. I'll just throw this in where no one will notice. The FIO K11 R2R is a budget R2R DAC. There are such things as high-end R2R DACs. Comments? As I said at the start, I'm covering what interests me most here that the K11 R2R is an R2R DAC, and it comes in at an affordable price point. Any serious hi-fi enthusiast might buy one, therefore, because, well, they need a DAC, but more like because they have a plain old cheapest chips Delta Sigma, or even a high-end Delta Sigma, and they want the R2R experience. BTW, by the way, enthusiasts can select oversampling or non-oversampling as they wish. But this is a topic that I'd probably need a whole video to cover properly. It's more of the experience, though. To summarise the subjective issues, and I feel that as objectivist as I normally like to be, they are important. R2R gets love for its natural, warm, or musical qualities. Delta Sigma is praised for clarity and precision. Whether these align with reality is tricky. R2R's higher distortion, or maybe I should say less low distortion, could explain the softness some claim to hear, while Delta Sigma's oversampling might sharpen details but add filter artefacts. What I hear is that I hear no problems, and I'd be happy to use the K11 R2R for whatever listening I need to do. It drives my 32-ohm headphones loud and clear with plenty of volume to spare. Regarding R2R versus Delta Sigma, specifications are often on the side of Delta Sigma in noise and distortion. But subjectivists claim soul and analog feel in R2R, disregarding potential issues of resistor precision. Fact, preference, romance. If we're talking about putting the soul back into audio, 
Should I argue with that? As always, this item was sent to me, but other than that and any affiliate links, there's no payment or influence involved. So I can say what I like, and I've said it. See you soon. Thank you.